Hello friends, I welcome you back again to my video tutorial. In the first video tutorial, I have told you the concept of lines, two dimensional geometry, three dimensional geometry, the basic introduction, and I told you the concept, all the three types of lines, the parallel lines, the intersecting lines, and the transversal lines. Now I will move a step forward, forward, and uh, from now onwards, I will tell you. First of all, I told you in the last video tutorial that I will tell you about the proportionality theorem. So, but before taking on proportionality theorem, I will tell you the concept of angles. Angles. So, you can write it as concept of angles. Suppose this is a triangle. This is the line AB. See, see the three lines. This is angle alpha. This is angle beta. This is angle gamma. Suppose. So, what is angle alpha? What does this angle alpha imply? Angle alpha implies the orientation of this line AC keeping AB as the baseline. You can say that. That alpha is that angle or you can say alpha is the orientation of line AB when of the line AC when AB is considered as a baseline. Or in other words we can also say that, that alpha is that angle or we can say that alpha is indirectly the orientation of line AB when we keep line AC as the base. This is the technical definition of an angle. Same, in, by the same logic, if I go to the angle gamma, we can say that, or angle beta, or angle beta, I can say that the angle beta is the orientation of line BC keeping AB as the standard line or the baseline. Or we can also say that, that angle beta is the orientation of line AB when I keep line BC as the baseline. When I, similarly, when I come to gamma, I can say that gamma is the orientation of line BC when I keep AC as the baseline. And also we can say that gamma is the orientation of line AC when I keep BC as the baseline. The same thing. The orientation is differing. So this is, this is the basic definition of angles. Next thing, types of angles. All angles lying in the range of 0 to 90 degree. You can say that suppose angle less than 90 greater than 0. Thank you, Daniel. Okay. Now, right angle. Again, Obtuse angle. Again, 180 degree angle, it becomes straight line. Again, next, 180 degree to 360 degree. What it becomes? This is what I have written. I am giving you a minute. Please jot it down in your copies. So this is the basic uh, types of the angles. Acute angle, all those angles whose magnitude is greater than 0 degree but less than 90 degree are acute angles. All those angles whose magnitude is equal to 90 degree is a right angle. All those angles uh, which are uh, greater than 90 degree and less than 180 degree are obtuse angles. All those angles which are 180 degree, they are not no more an angle, but they are a straight line. Can you remember? 90 degree is the case of a right angle triangle and whole of the trigonometry is based on the concept of 90 degree angle. That is the right angle triangle. I will explain that to you in, in the later video tutorials of trigonometry. And every angle which is greater than 180 degree will be considered as a reflex angle. Obviously between 180 degree and 360 degree. Now suppose, If there is a figure with some, something like this in front of you, this is angle A, this is angle B, this is angle C, this is given to you 30 degree, this is given to you 50 degree and the question that is being asked to you that is, suppose the question is something like this, that is what is the 
reflex angle B. This is reflex. Suppose the question, this is the question to This is the triangle ABC. Angle A is equal to 30 degree, angle C is equal to 50 degree, angle B is not known. I have to find out what is the reflex angle B. So how we are going to find out this B? Obviously this is 30 degree, this is 50 degree. So B will be, I have told you in the previous lecture that all the sum. First of all, I have not told this to you right now, but uh, generally I am assuming that you know what are the sum of the all the angles of a triangle. This is 180 degree. I will tell you when I will be dealing in triangles. At this point of time, in order to make you understand what reflex angle is, I am taking up this thing. That reflex angles are those angles which are between 180 and 360. That is greater than 180 degree and less than 360 degree. In this video, this is 30 degree, this is 50 degree. So this will be 180 minus 30 plus 50. 180 minus 30 plus 50. How much it will come out? 100 degree. 100 degree. But it has asked us a reflex angle B. What have we calculated the value of B? 100 degree. But 100 degree will not be our answer. So what will be our answer? In order to understand what will be your answer, suppose this is something like this. Suppose this is a point. What will be this whole central angle? This whole central angle will be 360 degree. So if this much part is 90 degree, so what will be this much part? This much part will be 270 degree. This 90, this 90 and this also 90. Each 90. So basically we can assume that this is a central point and around it there is a whole angle of 360 degree of which this part is equals to 100 so this part will be equals to 360 minus 100 which will come out as 260 degree now 260 degree comes in the range of greater than 180 and less than 360 so what will be the answer of this question that is what is the reflex angle be the answer will be 260 degree you will not mark 100 degree because 100 degree is not a reflex angle 100 degree lies in the range of greater than 90, less than 180, so 100 degrees is an obtuse angle. So if the question is something like this, what is the reflex angle B? Then you have to consider those values of that angle that will fall between the range of 180 and 360. And in that case, we are not going to take out the inner angle, we are going to take out the outer angle. This is the whole point. Reflex angle, whenever the, whenever the question is in the form of reflex angle, always remember the answer will be between 80, between 180 and 360. This is what you have to remember. If it, this thing at this point is clear to you, it's well and good. It is not clear to you, I will tell, you, tell about it to you in my later videos. This thing in detail will be covered in when I will take up triangles later on. Now, suppose this is angle theta, suppose. Now, what is the meaning of angular bisector? Suppose this point is O. If from any external point, I say that an angular bisector is drawn to this point is O, then what does that mean? That this line O, suppose this is P, OP will divide this angle theta into two equal parts. That is what angular bisector is. That is, if it is being told that OP is angular bisector at O, then what does it mean? That this line OP is going to bisect this angle theta into two equal halves. So if it is theta, then this half will become theta by 2, this half will become theta by 2. This is what angular bisector means. It is very much evident and very much implied in what this uh, two words mean. Angular bisector, obviously that line which bisects the angle into two equal parts. So this is angular bisector. I will tell you about this more. Now first come on to the concept of proportionality theorem. Now, in order to deal with this proportionality theorem, I have to go a bit back in that figure which I draw to in order to make you understand the transversal lines. 
In the previous video lecture, I told you about the transversal lines. For that, I brought a figure. So this proportionality theorem deals with those transverse lines. Now suppose I am drawing the line. These are the three lines that I have drawn. I think I should make them a bit shorter in order to make them understand. I am making them a bit shorter so that I can get space to the left side for writing. I will extend it to you this little bit this side. So these are the three lines. Suppose this is AB, CD, XY or EA. And the same note AB is parallel to CD is parallel to EF. What does this imply? That these lines AB, CD and EF are parallel to each other. By saying that these three lines are parallel to each other, I mean to say that, that these three lines will not intersect each other at any point. This is the whole point that AB, CD and EF are not going to each, intersect each other at any point. That is, they are going to extend infinitely forever without intersecting each other. So they are parallel lines. This is the first condition. Now I am going to draw some transversal lines. I have drawn this transversal line. I am drawing this transversal line. I am drawing this transversal line. These three transversal lines I have drawn. This line is a bit slanty. I should make it a perfect straight line. Okay, this is reasonably good. So now I am wanting it something like this x1, y1, z1. This I am pointing as x2, y2, z2. This is z. This I am pointing at x3, y3, z3. So, these were the three parallel lines and of these three parallel lines, I draw these transversal lines. This x1, z1, x2, z2 and x3 Z3 are transversal lines. X1, Z1, X2, Z2, X3, Z3, they are transversal lines. X1, Z1, X2, Z2, and X3, Z3 are transversal lines. Now, here in this case, what proportionality theorem says? The cross proportionality theorem says that, says that that the intercepts drawn by transversal lines on any set of parallel lines will be equal. I will again repeat that the intercepts drawn are yeah, basically the intercepts made by transversal lines on a particular particular set of parallel lines will have the same ratio. This is a note. The intercept made by the transversal line, transversal lines on a particular set of parallel lines will have the same ratio. You can also say here all transversal lines. I will explain to you first to write down this statement. The trans intercepts made by all transversal lines on a particular set of parallel lines will have the same ratio. This is the note. You press jot, in, uh, jot down this note in your copies, then I will explain what does this note means. So now I will tell you what does this note means. I hope you have written it down. This note means that, suppose, I suppose this transversal x1, z1. So what is the amount of, you can say, the part which lies between line A and C, line AB and CD. 
This is line AB, this is line CD. What is the part of this transversal X1, Z1 between AB and CD? This, this much. Between line AB and between line CD, how much part of line X1, Z1 follows? X1, Y1. So I wrote down here X1, Y1. First point. Now, what is the part of this line X1, Z1 lying between parallel lines CD and EF? This is parallel line CD, this is parallel line EF. Now, between parallel line CD and EF, what part of line X1, Z1 lies? So, this part lies. So, below this I am going to write Y1, Z1. That means X1, Y1 upon Y1, Z1. The respective distances between AB and CD and CD and EF of the transversal X1, Z1. The ratio is this one. Now, what will be the ratio of the second transversal? This is the first transversal. This is the second transversal. This is the third transversal. So the second transversal line between lines AB and CD. AB and CD are parallel lines. So between the parallel lines CD and AB, what is the part of the second transversal line? It is X2, Y2. It is X2, Y2. So I am going to write here X2, Y2. And of the second transversal line, what is the part that lies between the parallel lines CD and EF? It is Y2, Z2. So here in the base I will write y2 z2. Okay? Coming on to the third transversal line. In this third transversal line, what is that part of this transversal line which lies between these parallel lines AB and CD? This is parallel line AB and CD and between this parallel line, between these two parallel lines, what is the part of the third transversal line? This is x3 y3, this part. So I am writing here x3 y3 and what is the part of this third transversal line which lies between parallel lines CD and EF? This is this part y3 z3. So I am writing here y3 z3. Now these two ratios will be respectively equal to each other. And this is what is proportionality theorem. This is proportionality theorem. I am going to write it a bit more clear to here. Maybe it is not clear to here. here. Y1, Z1 equals to X2, Y2, Y2, Z2 equals to X3, Y3, Y3, Z3. This is proportionality theorem. That means, I will again going to repeat you the basic theory of this thing. This says that the respective intercepts made by Tra all transversal lines on a particular set of parallel lines is equal when it comes to the ratio of those intercepts. That is the in ratio of the intercepts of all parallel lines on a particular set of uh, the, sorry the intercepts of all transversal lines on a particular set of parallel lines are equal. Now obviously at least three parallel lines should be there in the set. In the a set of parallel lines. Obviously, if there would be only two parallel lines, there would only be one intercept. So, no ratio should have been possible. So, in order to fulfill this criteria, it is important that in that set of parallel lines, at least three parallel lines should be there. At least three parallel lines. That is more than three parallel lines can be there. Here, you may see that three parallel lines are there. There can also be four parallel lines. There can also be five parallel lines. There can also be six parallel lines, seven parallel lines. But there cannot be two parallel lines. Because in the case of two parallel lines, we cannot apply the proportionality theorem. Because from applying the proportionality theorem, we have to take the ratio. And if we have to take the ratio, there should be at least three parallel lines. Because when three parallel lines will be there, there will be two intercepts. And it will be possible to take the ratio of those two intercepts. And when there are only two parallel lines, there will be only one intercept. And it will not be possible to take the value of, take the ratio when there is only one intercept. In order to take the ratio of the intercepts, we need, and we need at least two parallel, at least three parallel lines, and more than three parallel lines can also be there. So, for proportionality theorem, three parallel lines are needed. So, why I am telling this thing again and again? Because uh, from the elementary concept, from the con uh, for the guys who are studying in the lower classes of schooling, this type of concepts is very important for them. I am going telling this video from the very most basic concept. 
so that everything becomes a very lucidly clear to you as clear as water so I hope this concept is clear to you proportionality theorem now with the same figure a same type of figure of transversal line I would like to understand the concepts of corresponding angles alternate angles but that I am going to cover in my next lecture so till now in this lecture I have told you the concept of angles various types of angles and the proportionality theorem thank you for watching my video lecture in the best literature I will brief you about the uh, basically uh, drawing the transversal lines on the parallel lines and telling you about the corresponding angles, alternate angles, opposite interior angles, vertically opposite angles. So wait for my next video lecture. Thank you.